I'm Andrew Gaze from the Melbourne Tigers, the 1993 NBL champions, and welcome to Swish Video 93. Before we go any further, I'd just like to warn you about the perils of copying this videotape. It's illegal and you could find yourself in jail. Or even worse, I could be sending around the big 6 foot 10 Mark Bradke to slam dunk you instead of the ball. So please, don't copy this tape. Gaze almost walks the ball up. Big dunk from Bradke. The NBL has been improving year in, year out. I think that the crowds are continually, continually getting bigger and bigger at, at the games. I think the TV audience is also getting bigger and bigger. And also the participation rate, most importantly, is, is increasing. You only have to look around now and see how many kids are involved in the sport and how many people are playing the game on a recreational level. Um, it, and it just shows how quickly the sport is growing here in Australia and it's something that the future looks very, very good for basketball in Australia. I must say it's been a tremendous NBL season and I take great pride in presenting the highlights of the 1993 competition. And by the way, you're going to be seeing a lot of the Tigers because we were the champions. It was the year Mike Mitchell actually survived the season, but he really tried not to. Yes, the year of living dangerously, as the young gun teaches the old dog a new trick. Luke gives Remus a goodbye gift. Graham Cubank shows you can get a little too much sun up there in Townsville. And the most flagrant act of bullying all year, Dean Utoff, you should be ashamed of yourself. And Dwayne McLean, that is a terrible, terrible thing to do. Right, Wayne, stop laughing. And Big Jim doesn't like comments about his haircut, OK? Speaking of haircuts, Bruce Palmer should never have laughed at Freddy's. Well, the year of blocks and Steve free. Voss shows there is something to those haircuts. Darren Lucas comes from Cafe Bay to stun Andrew Gaze. And so does Scott Ninnis. For sheer importance, though, James Crawford's denial of Jason Reese saved a season. The assists. Lachlan Armfield's arm grew a couple of centimetres after this one, and Fred, what a finish. Now, watch Scott Fisher here. He doesn't even know Grace has passed it to him until it's in his hands, but no mistake. Even better, Bruce Bolden never knew where this was going until it swished. Let's look at the no-look. Keogh to D'Ambrosis. 
gaze to Copeland. Surprise, surprise. How's this for bliss if you're on the low post? Morrison, the fast break that ended with the rim shake. Or was it this? Remus over the backboard and in safe hands. Now that is a pass. So many great dunks from the tip off. Everett Stevens just explodes away for this. And how about his backdoor break and enter against the Kings? Mike Mitchell returns for his own tip off crusade. Little pause and then absolute perfection. For a mid air adjustment, none better than Dwayne McLean. Speaking of adjustments, how about missing the three? then chasing up and making the jam. Ricky Jones found so many ways to slam it in 93. And so did Andre Moore. Paul Maley proves airmail really is the best way to deliver. But give the prize to Robert Rose, who makes it all happen just when you think it's safe to look away. And yet, you don't have to dunk them to make them faint. Kenny Mack. Greg Hubbard, bad miss. OK, I'll try again. You're kidding! Let's do this right. Michael Morrison, exuberant execution of elastic expectations. Butch Hayes, textbook focus for the kids at home. Andrew Vlahov, well he can do everything else. Why not this? And Mike Mitchell, the no-look pass, easy. Try the no-look shot. Winners, try JC's jam to snatch the game from Canberra. That hurt. Dwayne's tray on the buzzer in Hobart, that hurt even more. Mitchell's three to revive the rollers. Well, that hurt a little bit. And Copeland's unforgettable sleight of hand against the Magic. That hurt a lot. But this, this one, a car. OK, Larry and Mikey are there. Off the ring, in the air, off the backboard, all net. Cute shot of the year. The rapping baby or the raving loony? Take your pick. Tech foul too. Hey, Andre, I've got plenty on my chest. <laughs> Screen of the year, Terry Dozier on Rod Johnson. Ooh, not quite. It was Sibley on Torrance. And Trev took a while to rev after that one. Reaction of the year, Rog. Well, it's only a game, Rog. Come on, Rog. Mascot of the year. Hey, this guy is going places. Croc, we salute you. Alley oop of the year. Could only be these guys. Great adjustment, Lennart. Crazy of the year. Well, was it Drewy for daring to play in Disneyland? Or was it this guy for daring to leave the asylum? Take your pick. Maybe it was these guys. We leave you with the buzzer-beating boomers. Firstly from Kenny, and now Andre, and then Lennard. And the man who just seems to turn up at these turnouts, Laha. Some light bitters seem to lose that crisp, clean taste after a couple of glasses. So what's so special about Foster Special? When you bring up the subject of nicknames, there's always a few that will spring straight to mind when you're talking about the NBL basketball competition. There's the Amazing, there's the Rookie, there's the Baseline Bandit, and there's plenty more. See if you can pick who these stars are in this year's 1993 quarterfinal action. After an horrendous start to the season, which saw them with just one victory from six games, the Tigers have clawed their way back to become legitimate championship contenders. Oh my, Reggie, that was a powerful dunk. Last year's runners-up to the title have more strength inside with the inclusion of Australian centre Mark Bradkey. After a slow start, Bradkey's work rate has lifted and the team is better equipped. Pulls up to the little 15-footer and Mark Bradkey is doing it all. Our depth is better. I think that we're a bit more mature than we, uh, we were last year in handling adversity. We're fitter. As we were going into the finals last year, we had a bunch of crocs there that uh, people were getting painkillers and, uh, and struggling through, but they showed no lack of courage or determination. Um, maybe you need those sort of obstacles sometimes to, uh, to bring out the best in players, but I think we're fitter, we're, we're better prepared, and we're deeper, but uh, the competition's pretty tough as well. The Tigers have got the rebound, Copeland. Will they go for three? Copeland! He makes it's a shot! shot. Unbelievable! Rose from halfway! The Tigers have won! Oh, this is how the great comebacks of all time! Look at the Tigers! Remarkable!
remarkable victory. The Magic can't believe it. You have witnessed the greatest comeback in NBL basketball just about of all time. They score more points than any other side and have the best field goal percentage in the league. But more importantly, they have beaten every team in the top eight at least once this season. A phenomenal victory from where they... Gaze Aliyuk to Copeland! The famous Gaze-Copeland combination is working again for the Tigers, but it's the work rate of players such as Dave Simmons, Robert Sibley and Warwick Giddy who are playing vital supporting roles. Back to Sibley Jam! After coming close last year, the Tigers are on track to go one step further in 1993. Goal goes all the way. Nice play from The Illawarra Hawks started season 93 as the team most unlikely to make the playoffs. Even when they continued to roll the big guns as the season progressed, few so-called experts gave them any hope of maintaining their form through to the end of September. But maintain it, they have. And as Perth, Brisbane and the Melbourne Tigers have found out, the Hawks on their day can match up with the best. The man who's moulded the Illawarra Hawks together is Alan Black. We're very happy with the way the season's gone so far, but we're certainly not uh, counting our chickens yet. We've got to play hard in the playoffs and win some games. We are just seconds away from the tip-off, and boy, is there some atmosphere here tonight. It's the importance of the game. It's playoff time as McDonald goes for a three, misses it, Chuck Harmison puts it in. Hope for the crowd to come good. Andrew Gaze, Gaze off balance and still hands it. Dean McDonald, they need a big game from him tonight. Almost stolen. Hayes free for a three-point shot. He it. Takes place. The crowd is going absolutely bananas. Pass inside. A nice one to Copeland. Nice play. They're looking to go inside to make use of that height and reach advantage. And slammed in by Simmons to the Tigers. Well, no doubt about it, the Tigers are going inside and outside. A noted three-point shooter and the Tigers know all about him. Nice pass inside. The Hawks just having trouble getting the handle on the ball. Hawkman hits a three, they needed it too. Donald, back out to Harmison. Harmison, outside his normal range, but he's hitting. Um, it's 38 to 14, they've cut the break back to 14 points. Will it be jump ball? Play on, the referees are just letting it go. And eventually, well, that was scrambling there. It was real playoff stuff. This finds a bit more room to move, and Sibley, I can see, coming up to check in. Oh, big jam from Bradkey. It's 42 to 26. Harmison underneath, off the glass. Chuck Harmison takes two. Three from the Hawks, so the Tigers' defense really doing the job for him. Pass inside was a beauty. Elliot to the second quarter. And that's with, you see, outside Chris Steele tries to lay it up. And with a big, a, a big momentum grabber. Straight into Harmison, takes the two point. Really having a big game for Illawarra. Thomas over the top, off the glass. Hey, they clear it out down low, four on the baseline. baseline Great pass. Really trying to shut Gaze down. What a long range ball. He's just on fire. Hayes takes two points. Tigers are playing well here tonight. Thomas, nice pass. Harmison takes two. And once again, two players end up on the ground. Aukran pulls up. He'll take a shot. No, he won't. He goes into Harmison. Why not? Harmison takes two. It'll count and he'll go to the line. And Harmison goes across and has something to say to the Tigers bench. Look, Hayes to his right. He goes to Hayes. Hayes takes Drives through, Copeland steals it away, and away goes Copeland, bang! And that was a big play. Gaze comes up, spins, takes his shot, gets it. What a play from Andrew Gaze. Uh, looking to get some early points in this quarter. A trail by 10, takes the two points, Copeland. And he's come to play, they go back door to put they can't afford to take their time. Hayes, nice move. Butch Hayes. Corcoran drives. Off Hayes. Oh, it's cut out by Gaze with quick hands, and it's three on one. Ellie, you pass and slammed away by Cope. That is slammed a, away. That is There's only six Thomas. seconds left. Melvin Thomas crossed to Hayes. Hayes has said, I might as well take the final shot. He sinks it. And the final scoreline here 
107 to 95. A comprehensive win in the end to the Melbourne Tigers. Meantime, we see a steal. And guys, two points. Hawks caught napping. Simply to guys. Steele's got, got back in time, but Gay still gets the shot away and puts it in for two. Now, Thomas is complaining there, but Mark Bradkey just stood his ground. His hands were straight up, and uh, that's really good defense. Gay's alley -oop to Copeland. Harmison gets two points, so it's 24 14. Turnover. Hayes nicks it from Gay's. Missed the shot, but he is a left-hander, so we'll give him some credit for that. What do we call the points didn't go down. What do we call that? Switch shooting? As guys <laughs> <is> <laughs> shoots through. The switch shooter. Good work from Thomas to get it to Hayes. Gaze trying to get back, but can't get back in time. Bradkey, Copeland. He takes the three-point shot and knocks it down. And what a first half to Leonard Copeland. Five from eight at the three-point line. He's got 19 points. Lucky not to get a technical in complaining. Sure looked like a foul. And Copeland, punishment at the other end. So he now goes to six out of nine. Guards need to take a dribble further down towards the baseline. It'll open up a passing angle for them. Oh, he got it again. Seventh three-point in a Copeland. Corcoran. Tries to reply with a three, and he does. Copeland. He's up to 29. Hayes has been the, the man that generated most things in offensive-wise and getting it going, and that's him inside. What a lovely shot. Corcoran. Hayes off the glass, and it goes. Sibley, unguarded, maneuvers the basket. Gaze with a three. This will break a heart. Hayes, great dish to Thomas inside. And is either fouled by Sydney or Bradkey. Two games to nil. And they now take on the Southeast Melbourne Magic. Once you get to the playoffs, it's, it's never easy. So, I mean, travel is just a part of uh, part of preparation to get to the final. The way the crowd are like this. Four. It's the money end of the season, and the Bullets are ready to handle the challenges of the playoffs. It will be tough. The team is coming off their most demanding road trip of the season, the Geelong-Perth double, but there'll be no whinging. We're not going to allow the travel to be an escape hatch for failure. Uh, if you're going to win a championship, you have, to, you have to come out and play to win, and you have to beat any team or overcome any obstacle that's thrown in front of you. And although the travel remains a concern, Palmer believes the Bullets are peaking to perfection. Right now we're healthy, which we haven't been all year long, and, and uh, that's pivotal. You know, we, we've, we've peaked physically at the right time. Uh, I don't know, the enthusiasm is very good, and I think the year-long instruction and uh, execution is paying off. Uh, and I think our bench play has been good. So, yeah, I, I don't see any reason why we can't contest the title. As a team, we know we can beat any team in this league, and... Uh, I mean, it just shows that we, we proved to ourselves that we can beat them, you know. I don't think uh, it's that much of a bonus to us because uh, we know what we can do and what we can do. And uh, if we play good on any given night, they have to try to stop us. I guess the guys, you know, are used to each other now. This is the first time they kept their uh, imports for uh, successive seasons, and so we haven't had to spend a, uh, half a season getting to know each other. And uh, we got Grant Kruger and Peter Harvey who are in their fifth season now. They're, they're veterans now, and the team is much older and more mature and, and more experienced. We've got uh, a team that, that has grown together a little bit, believes a little bit more in themselves. Uh, we've got the... Uh, uh, overcame the injuries that we had last year and, and we felt that we had a playoff bound team last year before those injuries so so we uh, we added Simon O'Donnell which is a good pickup for us uh, this year makes it a little bit more physical uh, we we stepped it up and, and just started from the beginning of the season where we believed that we were going to make the playoffs and, and we did that job so it, it's much the same team as last year but uh, a team that just believed uh, that they were going to accomplish something this year and did it Side, no, the 45 and can't make it, and it's over. The and the Falcons 
Evans. They've got to be used tonight, and this is the guy that needs to start firing. Knows you with the rebound and makes the basket early, in the early minutes on game one. Loggins. Well, there's an interesting matchup, Terry. Al Green on Leroy Loggins. The transition of the Bullets now. Andre Moore keeps control. Oh. Bad turnover by the Falcons. Smith. Coleman. Blocking foul called on Terry Dozier. Heel. Dave Colbert, two, had the shot blocked. Heel thought about the three. Loggins will take the three-point shot. Looks good. You don't see that very often. But the Bullets are leading foul. Oh, big the slam from Kuiper. Right over Colbert. As if they said, well, we're good enough. We made the finals. Uh, let's think about next year. It's only early days yet, but Blair Smith made a big clutch two-pointer. Johnson wants to continue the good work of the opening quarter. Yes, well, uh, Michael Johnson, like I said, he's a confidence player, and there we see the quickness of Stevens once more. Johnson, Kruger inside, good pass. Everett oh. Stevens flies high for the two-handed dunk. Stevens away. Johnson for a big three pointer, yes! Down there in that play, offensive play of the Falcons, we see Michael Johnson coming off a big screen and another three. Shot was flat, I should rather say. Andre Moore drives through the keyway. That's a big, strong move by Andre Moore. Good play on. Shane Hill, the fake, makes the basket. Gribble. They'll leave him alone from outside. He shoots, and the Falcons pay the price. Gribble. Gonna be a great finish. Colbert for three, yes! Smith, Shane Hill wants three more of his own. He knocks it down! Oh, Stevens put the foot down. Loggins, he's away. Leroy Loggins, the finger roll. Dozier, what will he do? Turns, shoots, tough basket, Terry Dozier. Stevens. Charging, blocking power call. Bodies everywhere. Three point ball game. 36 seconds remaining. Everett Stevens, will he be the player? They've got it. Need a three pointer. Stevens in trouble. Trying to set himself. Picks it back out. Dozier. Can he do it? No. Pops back out. Turnover. That's probably the ball game. The Bullets. 121. And the Bullets have done it. They're into the semi finals of the Mitsubishi Challenge. 122 over the Newcastle Falcons. 118. You haven't seen the best basketball for Magic. Um, it's probably a good time to sort of weed all our, our, um, our problems out. So uh, we had some good games against Geelong and some against uh, the Gold Coast, but since then it's been, we've had a quarter of bad basketball, we've had a half of bad, bad basketball. So we've got to get rid of that, that bad patch out of our game and it'll be perfect. At this time last year, we might have been playing better, uh, but for whatever reason that we're not playing better this year, um, it's hard to say. Um, we have a better, uh, better shooting team. That's for sure, uh, you know, with the addition of, of Graham and Parkson shooting the ball well, Tony shooting the ball well, we Rob at the point spot, uh, uh, relieving DP, and even when DP comes in. Uh, so our outside shooting this year is, is a lot better than last year. For anyone to deny the magic of another grand final appearance, they will have to beat them on their home court at Flinders Park. Something only one NBL team has managed in two years. Grace, nice move, jammed in by Vlahov. The Wildcats backed up that win six weeks ago in Perth. However, it won't be another team that threatens the Magic's back-to-back -back title aspirations. To me, the major threat is ourselves. Finals is a time where uh, you can't hold anything back. You've got to step on the court being ready to play, no matter who you're playing. So therefore, uh, you've got to take it upon yourself individually and collectively as a team uh, to have everything together and, and uh, carry it out on the court. I think we'll be able to handle it all right. You know, we've got Phil coming back and 
who's had numerous uh, championship experiences. You've got Scott coming back, myself, Mark Davis and, and so forth. Um, you know, so the experience is there which you know, really counts, I think, in finals time. Playing midweek, does that bother you at all? No, not really, because you know, we do it anyway for the local league, so I think most of us are, are, are used to playing, uh, plus an extra night off training. Michael, your game has certainly changed this year. You've become more defensive oriented than offensive. What's the reason behind that? Well, I think it's just the way things have gone. You know, the offensive uh, things have been taken care of by the other guys, and um, you know, I, th I thought it was one of the facets that I had to sort of work on in my game, defence and rebounding, and you know, I've been doing it this year. Oh, I think usually the defence is the thing that's stepped up during the year. You get uh, you know, 120, 130 point games. Uh, you don't see any of those, or, or very few of them, in the playoffs. They come back down to the 80s and 90s. So I think the teams that uh, can play defence are going to be the teams that are going to be there at the end. I think, uh, you know, you have to beat uh, everyone if you're going to get the clear to the end. And uh, I would say probably uh, you'd better, uh, at least the way I figured it out, you'd be better off maybe playing Perth. Uh, if you win that, then you are you got the top seed. Uh, at least that's my understanding. So uh, that might be better. I, I don't know. I, I think, again, uh, all four of those teams uh, in the upper bracket are tough. Uh, they've beaten us. Uh, the only one we've beaten yeah, at all was, was the Tigers, and so uh, we got our work cut out for us. But I, I really feel with a good game, uh, there's isn't anyone we can't beat, too. And when it happened, it would have kept uh, the average player out, I think, for the rest of the season, but not Mark Davis. Those and the Bolton were kept below their team, their season averages. And uh, that went a long way, of course. Ronaldson having a very good year. He's averaged uh, 20 points, and there's a turnover. The 36ers, Nina Smythe, back to Smythe. And here's the car. This Adelaide side is absolutely hot. Lucas and his probably matched up quite a few times at training, and any bad memories may be revisited tonight. What about that uh, lack of pace oh, yeah, against Phil Smythe? Phil's in close, was a good pass. Take away by Mark Davis. The way they go, here to see Robert Rose. He's going to go all the way. Robert Rose, a real superstar of this NBA in 1993. Robinson has got that three point ability. He's got it. For Brian Gorgian. Things turned around. And free up Robert Rose. He became the dominant factor. Nina swings his way through. Hey, Robinson, away goes Scott Nittis. A super cut off there by Graham. Back to Ronaldson. Get to the high motion. Some great tactics and two outstanding coaches. Great pirouette by Robinson. Oh. Yeah, he's going to sit down again. Baseline. Blackmore. Davis. Ten seconds to go in this game. Davis with a long run. So uh, Adelaide, six points in arrears now. And the game is about to come to a close right now. The Magic have done it well. The Magic have won the game 99-93. to 93. Good work from Robinson. Forces the turnover, but unfortunately for the 36ers, as Phil Smythe visits the score bench. Rose, bowl and dunk coming up. Most of the season, actually, Don Monson went through it this afternoon at training, so it is something they were expecting to use tonight. Quickly to Rose. Well, excellent hustle by big David Robinson in that particular case. Did well then, a bit unlucky. Rose with the most tremendous drives that we've seen so often this season and last. Comes up with the ball yet again, and that's really the beauty of Darren Lucas. He fights so hard to get it. Graham this time for three from the corner and knocks it down. Magic lead. Davis for three. Oh, and knocks it straight down. Dorsch. But there's a backdoor play to Ninnis, and Rose was coming up for the big block. Yeah, that'll test the ribs. Oh, boy, oh, boy, that one hurt. Another turnover, Ronaldson. Rose. Lucas. Graham for three. Oh, great shot. He was off balance. He still knocked it down for three. Yeah, Giants! We're the playoffs! We're playing for our lives as, as a basketball team and, and, and also as basketball players. I mean, 
the finals is what it's all about. So we've been playing for that for the last few weeks when it really sort of sinks in. 1993 was never going to be easy. Bruce Palmer, Scott Fisher, Ray Borner and David Graham headed their own separate ways, leaving rookie coach Brett Brown with the job of rebuilding. It was a thankless task that has taken most of the season to complete. I think that we have talent. You know, I reckon that we are, we are strong in, in various positions and I think that we have the uh, ingredients to give people trouble. We, we are just doing everything we possibly can to get into the playoffs. Once we do that, then we'll, we'll address whomever we're playing and go from there. Underway, and it was Crawford who got the first touch of season 1993. Adelaide had a magic weekend, it was the second weekend of the year, and that really gave us the momentum, winning those two. I think that up to that time there'd been a lot of questions, probably for ourselves as well, to say, you know, how good were the Wildcats going to be this year. A slight hiccup in the team's first home game of the season, a loss to Newcastle, but then an unbeaten run through May, their victims including the Melbourne Tigers and Sydney Kings. A buy in the first week of June, and then the Cats were out of sorts on the road against Illawarra. But that loss sparked an eight-match winning streak, a period in which the Wildcats established as theirs the number one spot in the league. They overcame adversity, beating Canberra without their coach. At the same time, built the best road record in the league. I think uh, one of the things we set down to do at the beginning of the year was to have the best road record in the league. And I felt that uh, coming from... Perth, if you got the best road record, then that would be a heck of an achievement. We saw Fisher knock in two points. Down the other end, Reedy does well to get the rebound. Great pass to Johnson. Excellent work, Giants. 15 to 12, Wildcats by three. Steve Davis now in for the Wildcats as James Crawford takes a rest. Reedy. She looks confident, doesn't he, quarters? He really does. Mike, they're having a few problems to shutting down Rudy at the moment, as the Giants are shutting out Torrance. Well, I was about to say the same, Zine. It's the uh, the Rudy Torrance show at the moment, isn't it? They uh, both going to have to get slowed down for their respective clubs. Johnson to Pierce, back to Rudy. Great teamwork, Giants. Good hand, however, by the Giants, and they come up with the ball again. Senstock to Maley. Leader, excellent work from the veteran. Michael? Should be, because there's a turnover. Jason Reese, the big two, and draws the foul. Listen to the crowd. And he's coming into the game as JC, he's fired up. And all of a sudden, it's back to four points. Seems to be getting higher and higher off the ground the older he gets. Yeah, I know what it is, and there's a huge block, and I'll tell you what, that was very close to a clean block from here anyway. Watterson back outside to Grace for three. Oh, a three-point shooting. Wildcats defense has really picked up. They are not giving an inch. Pierce this time from three, but he makes it under extreme pressure. That's a big basket. The Iceman knocks down the big three. Just past the halfway mark of this final quarter. Pierce for oh. three. Knocks. No foot on the line. Two points. Oh, big bucket from Trevor Torrance. Three points. That makes it a four-point ball game. And there it is. That's the sixth foul for Scott Fisher. He's out of the ball game against his old club. Wow, who would ever have believed that? And Scott Fisher, he's out of here. And don't the crowd love that? Well, they got short memories, huh? Sixth time, best and fairest for the Giants, and he's getting the royal send-off from his old fans. In the hands of Leader, Grace on him now, the bounce pass to Reese. Oh. Big reject by Crawford. Can't get it to go off the glass. Another defensive board to Crawford. Gets the pass out. Now to fly off at the Giants bench. Calling for travel. Nothing doing. Grace through the keyway. Real defensive effort needed from the Wildcats. They've lost the transitional leads they had early. Here's Vlahoff playing an inspirational game. And he practices that, I'd reckon. <laughs> Leader goes to Rees. Rees, triple teamed. Out. 
to Pierce, who steps away. Rees unmarked baseline. That's a good move by the youngster. Giants are sticking to their game plan of Wednesday night, as is that man. He's stuck to that game plan all his career. They're now trying to run the ball. Oh, that was close to a turnover as well. That's not necessarily the shot they want, but it is the shot from Fisher. Back out to Fisher. Fisher to the foul line. Here's Torrance. This is for three. And that's more like a double. That's probably the most important shot Torrance has made. Wildcats haven't been beaten on this court in five months. Torrance for three. And he was never going to miss. No, it was off his fingertips all the way. In three-point territory on the dribble now. He is leader to the foul line. Shot clock to nine. Reese for three. Oh. The big fella lands a bomb. Thank you very much. Quickly, John, they need to get that ball reversed, but probably a little quicker than what they're doing. And they need to punch it through the post. Pierce for three, and he keeps North Melbourne in the game. Big three that from Pierce. And now it's back to six, 80 to 74. Well, we're set for a thriller. Pierce with another three, and he puts the fist up. And now it's a three point game. Make that a four point game. She's got the ball now. The veteran of 33, they need him to lift. Race from long range. A triple that, and Perth back out to five. Remember, if the Wildcats lose, it's all over for 1993. They've got to win. Leader, great move from the veteran. And he gets it back out to a three-point lead for the Giants. Just the one overtime game during the regular season. Will this go to an overtime situation? Leader in grace. Lisa, leader on the drive. Pops up the ball. Underneath the swept away by Crawford. And it's 1.7 seconds on the clock. Adrian Hurley has called a timeout. Clock starts once it goes into Grace's hand. He takes the shot from a long oh, What a great save! Terrific basket from Grace, about five foot clear from the three point arc. A couple of seconds to go. And the Wildcats take this quarter final series to a third game. Second time leader with a steal. He's got two to beat. Grace comes back and wins possession for the Wildcats. Big outlet pass now to Fisher. Fisher from the line, gets the roll and draws the foul. That's an extremely important play phase for both clubs. And if they win tonight, they equal a club record of 14 consecutive winning games at home. There's Maley, who's been quiet for the series, and he lands a big three-pointer. Giants outside shooting, Mike, what do you make of that? Well, Peter, you'll see more of it because in that timeout, Brett Brown said we need to look for Pierce out there. He's just gone on the corner. There's a big three from Trevor Torres. Mainly to the foul line, kicks it out to Leader, and he was off before it left his hands virtually, Mike. Goes inside to Senstock, forced back out, Pierce for three, and that was from downtown, and Pierce is having a wonderful series. He'll nail it more often than not. Here's Torrance. Grace goes to Crawford, the floating jumper off the glass is good. Vlahov, he goes inside to Fisher. Fisher thought about the shot, looking to set something up. Good defense by Reese. he can't get too close, he's on three, Grace fires for three and connects. North Melbourne Giants capitalize upon concentration losses by the Wildcats. This is a very critical time, Brown must call a timeout soon, he can't let this keep going. I think he's called one right now. They're in a man-to-man -man posture now, and that means that sometimes, oh, Brown's almost on the court, screaming for a foul there that should have been called when Reedy took the play. It's a judgment call, and as so often happens, insult to injury at the other end of the court. The Giants then, Grace, great pass to Vlahov through the keyway. Well, he did that on Friday night. Well, that's as athletic as he wants to get. Very slow to get down the floor, the big fella. Here's leader for the keyway. Good move that. Gets two and draws a foul. So he'll go to the line for the three-point play. Different sets against different defensive situations. Takes a while to get back into the flow. Here's Fisher on the flow right now to Grace. And that's a magnificent move by the two stars. That is hanging in there. There's still a chance. Down by 17. Here's Crawford. One big step. Gets the, the foul in the end. We've counted down to six and a half minutes left in the third quarter. There's Maley. What a big reject by Vlahov. And here's Crawford making a 21-point deficit now. Now Fisher, 10-second warning sounds. Crawford from the baseline gets it back again. Wildcats dominating Crawford with the jab. It's going to show a fairly close game in the end. 11 points at the moment. Counting down, Baker. Gentle little two. And that will be full time to the Wildcats winning game three.
the best of the three quarter final series against North Melbourne, going through now to the semi finals. Let the crowd tell the story for a moment. There's a new day dawning. You feel it in the air. The world is growing closer. You see it everywhere. Cafe Pacific, helping the new world of international travelers arrive in better shape. Hi, Andrew Gaze here on Swish Video 93. I hope you're enjoying the show, and don't forget who the 1993 NBL champions are. And at number 10, Ricky Jones. If he were 10 feet tall, he could jump over Townsville. At number nine, the alley-oop may be old hat for these guys, but you try netting it this way. Number eight, David Robinson. He left a trail of bodies in 1993. This is no exception. At number seven, for sheer speed, this is one any Michael would be proud of. At number six, JC just may launch his team into glory this year with this kind of power. Ever ready for number five? We're going to take you into the twilight zone where everybody, except Everett, appears to be standing still. Number four is a flight into the unknown. Paul Maley delivers in the heaviest traffic. Let's see it again, Paul, from underneath. At number three, well, Andre Moore just hacks them down with plays like this. Did the earth move for you too, Adrian? Yeah, I thought so. At number two, everybody has to make adjustments, but this mid-air magnificence could only belong to the D train. Watch this. But number one was the best flex of all. From out of this world, Robert Rose decides to make the ordinary into something else. At number five, now which arm did Mike Mitchell wreck last year? Not this one. Get out of here. At number four, Darren starts with a D and ends in Andrew gazing at an empty net. Look out for the girls, Darren. At number three, well it never rains in Townsville, well only on Saturdays, right MD? Number two, what rhymes Number with boss and gloss and toss? Yes, this is one hawk whose wings were not clipped in 1993. And in the tradition of come from nowhere rejects, Scott Ninnis takes the money. That is so clean, you can see your face in it. There are a lot of colourful claims being made by light beers these days. So what's so special about Foster's Special? There is plenty to get through in this year's 1993 Swish video, so let's go straight to the semi-final action. Rebound Smith, good quick pass to Loggins. No call from the refs, heel for three. Loggins, magnificent work to slap it back to heel. Another chance for Brisbane. Colbert, great teamwork, Bullets. But you're right, Mike, the Bullets have got to get back. We're here again. Good night. Lahoff will have a second crack at it. No, he doesn't. Oh, oh, no. oh. I beg your pardon, it's a six point margin, 67 61. Oh, spectacular stuff. Oh, Smith. 
Top move. Gribble, shoot for three, he does! He nice knocks it in! Well, he was left alone, he thought about it, changed his mind, eventually shot the ball. Yeah. It was on the line for the Wildcats, the loss, and their season was over. For Brisbane, it was a chance to book a grand final berth. Over 8,000 fans had packed the entertainment centre, and what they're about to witness would have stunned even the Cats' most ardent supporters. The Wildcats simply went on a rampage. A scoring blitz rarely seen in a playoff game. The Cats, the league's minor premiers, cut loose and piled on the points. And he enjoyed that. Perth bombarded the basket. And as if the ball was drawn to the hoop like a magnet, the shots kept dropping. The Wildcats had taken the game by the scruff of the neck. Their outside shooting, nothing short of phenomenal. At one stage, it was nine from nine from three-point territory. Well, have you ever seen anything like this? And then a fitting finish to a memorable half. The Wildcats making something out of nothing. To head to the locker room, 22 points up. It's like the roof falling on you. It was unbelievable. And, you know, that would, you wouldn't say that that's the Wildcats' real strength, their three-point shooting. They had a disappointing loss last week. And it would have been very easy for them to turn around and come in tonight playing tentatively. The Bullets, however, wouldn't be denied. They came back in the second half. The inspirational Leroy Loggins led the charge and pulled it back to seven with a quarter to play. The match was in the balance in the final term. The situation called for someone to stand up. Scott Fisher answered the SOS. And with four inspirational plays from both ends of the court, Perth held out the Bullets to win by 13, squaring the semi-final series at one game apiece. Off target, outlet pass down the other end, Vlahov off the glass, gets it to go. Dates at a premium this afternoon and we've got a steal. Well done, Colbert, got the ball away from Fisher. Colbert looking to take it all the way and gets the roll. Can't shake off Shane Hill, low post is Crawford. The fate one way, then the other makes some space. And here's Fisher on the break. The dish, Vlahov baseline, good move the Wildcats. Interesting, Michael, to see if uh, Hurley will send the ball to Crawford against more inside the paint and whether Bruce Palmer changes the matchup. Young from four now. Here's a three from Hill, didn't miss by much. Catalini stripped of the ball by Froling, who comes up with it, needs support. Watterson dives on it. Big scrap from players from both sides, <laughs> and the refs for a while let it play. Well, give them a whistle, otherwise this is what happens. I mean, I know the, the officials this year have been allowing a lot more scrapping, but whenever that sort of contact is allowed to go for that long, inevitably the momentum of people diving is going to cause problems. Catalini at the elbow. Vlahov didn't put up the three. Here's Crawford, turnaround jumper. He's complaining about a bang to the midriff by Vlahov. Important for the Wildcats here to play some structured offense. Is that a structured play? Well, we haven't seen it done so far this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> and there's no way in the world that Brisbane can simply sit back and chip away at this lead. They've got to come out and strive to overcome it. Crawford to 21 now. A 22-point lead, 84-62. We're counting down now. Carroll wants a three and gets it. Well, the youngster enjoyed that. It's been a lean season for Chris Carroll. He's second in the NBL. He loved that three. Down to two seconds now. Perth just can't get it to go. The Perth Wildcats are through to the 1993 NBL Grand Final. Well, they'll meet the Melbourne Tigers. They've won the deciding game in the semi-final series against the Brisbane Bullets. Winning in handsome style in the end, 119 to 80. Tonight, live from Flinders Park, the semi-finals continue with the Magic and the Tigers at it again. Game one on Monday produced one of the matches of the year when Leonard Copeland inspired the Tigers to a thrilling victory. Magic have had plenty of time to think about it and will come out desperate to turn the tables. If they don't, it will bring their season to an end, allowing the Tigers a right to contest the grand final. Another chapter begins as the Melbourne Derby enters Game 2, live on the NBL Network. And the Tigers, of course, lead this competition 1-0. They win tonight, they're through to the grand final. We're away. And a violation. 
to start off with. That's a foul. That's, that's a most unusual call for the start of a game. David Simmons has been called for a foul in the tip. There's going to be no big pardons in this game. You can see immediately Magic seem to have been shocked a little on Monday night with the aggression of the Tigers early. I think they're going to be ready to give as much as they get this time. And watch number 32, Bruce Bowler tonight. Graham knocks down a three for the Magic. Oh. Shot from Ronaldson, misses, now Gaze. Drives his way to the basket, two points, Andrew Gaze. First score for the Tigers, they trail three to two. Shot from Ronaldson, misses, now Gaze. Drives his way to the basket, two points, Andrew Gaze. First score for the Tigers. Copeland. Court Rose napping somewhat there, I thought. A lot more aggressive start by them. Ronaldson again for seven from 17. Copeland. Oh, good assist to Brackley underneath. Again, we see Bolden having to catch the ball outside the three-point line. He's not as effective out there. Lucas this time posting up against Gaze. The turnaround jumper. Nothing but net for Darren Lucas, who is having another blinder of a game. Oh, almost the clever steal. Yes, the steal from Gaze. Will he go to Simmons? No, all the way himself. So again, some danger times. Oh, Gaze again. He's individually turned this game around in the last two minutes. He has been the man. Darren Perry has hit the court for the first time tonight. Maybe he can turn the tide. Bolden. And at long last, Bruce Bolden drops one from the field. He's up to seven points. 64-58. Here's a chance. Now, with an Achilles injury, and that could be the three-pointer they need. Now Whitehead gets past Rose. Oh, great pass to Bradkey. And the Magics, the Magic have finished the season 93. 68-79. Graham, rebound to Tenner. Walter to Copeland, dunk time! The Tigers are through to the grand final. The guys carried us through. It was, it was beautiful, you know, that they could lift to the next level and everyone took care of it and it was just a fantastic result. And for a team that can't play defense and hasn't got a point guard, we're not doing too bad. You know, this stage of the year, it doesn't, I wouldn't care if I had one point or 50 points. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is the, is the win and we were able to pull through and get that. And the big fella, what a game. You know, I, I've been playing with him for seven or eight years, but in my book, because maybe it's because it's with the Tigers, but that was his best for sure. You know, he's almost seven feet and he takes up so much space in there and he's just a presence inside. He sets such a big target, you know, you can't not but throw it in there. Butch Hayes, a crucial free throw. They lead by one. Makes the shot. Lightning pass. Johnson has a chance to tie up the ball game. Maley. Gaze is the man they'll be looking for. He has the ball. Long outlet pass to Keogh. The behind the back dribble. Who will make the three-point attempt? It's Bruce Bolden. He makes the shot. Sensational stuff. We have a tie. A final oh. finish. Uncut. Pure. Uncut. Pure. Uncut. When it comes to scoring points in a single game, there's just no keeping up with the Joneses. Nice inside nice. pass for Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones of the Townsville Suns left it till the last round of the regular season to hoop his way to an NBL season high of 53 points against the Magic. Four of the season's top ten scores belong to the Rain Man, which just goes to show it never rains, it pours. The only other player to forge through the 5-0 barrier in 93 was the Giants' Jason Reese, who rode the Gold Coast Rollers for 51 in July. For points per game, you couldn't go past that Gaze boy, and nobody did. Oh, that's just class. Andrew Gaze, you're a genius. With an average output of 33 points a match, he was clearly number one when it came to hitting twos. And 
three. Oh, he is unbelievable. Yeah. And he's brought the whole crowd to, his, to their feet. It's the eighth year in a row that Drew has led the league in points a game. Truly a Jordan-esque achievement. Andrew Gaze is just a scoring machine and he comes out and plays every minute on the court hard. Great pass to Gaze. What a every time we play uh, Melbourne, first thing that comes out of Brian's mind is Andrew Gaze. Andrew Gaze, three point attempt for Gaze and they're away. He has all the skills to do exactly what the NBA players do. A little bit of shake and bake time for Andrew Gay, showing some skills, sensational oh. move. Have a look at that one. I don't think you can actually stop Andrew Gay, no matter whether you, whether you take him out in the first couple of minutes or what. He'll be sitting on the bench, he'll still be scoring. Here's a chance for the Tigers. Gay left to be quick. He shoots and gets the three pointer. Sensational stuff. <laughs> well, now, do you feel like one of the Gay's family? Are you kidding? No, <laughs> <laughs> no they're a very nice family, you know. That, that's. Uh, one of the reasons I came back this year, I mean, because of the family, family oriented, you know, team and everybody's close and um, that helps a lot. I mean, because when you're on the road and you're, you're away from home, you miss your family. Gaze alley to Copeland! Gaze, two on one here. Will he give it to Copeland? He does! And oh! oh! Just watch this shot, all right? Oh, oh you missed. <laughs> Beauty ball. That's a shot and a half. Oh, what a shot. The thing that, that I get the, the biggest kick out of is that when people look back and say that, that attribute a lot of the success of the sport in general to, to your performance and your contribution to the sport, you know, obviously I haven't done that by myself and, and I, I don't hold any imagination that it is purely and simply all my my doing but just to be a part of that and to have contributed to that is perhaps one of the highest praise that someone could give to me. Oh. I'm dunking it now all right jeez Today, people travel between countries like they used to travel between cities. And one airline best understands their needs. Cathay Pacific. Every flight we make is international, with cabin attendants from 10 Asian lands serving a single purpose, to help the new world of international travelers arrive in better shape. There's a new world on Cathay. Well, I think a lot of people have said that I'm the number one man in basketball and that really is a, a huge compliment but the reality of it is there's many many number one players in this country I think that when you look around the league and see the the caliber of competition there's a lot of great players around that that um, have made equally of good a contribution to, to their teams in the sport so but for me I think that the difference is is that because I play for Australia and have been in the league so long here perhaps my profile is a little bit higher than some of the other players and it's a lot of fun. I think that there's nothing gives you more of a thrill when you're walking down the street and people recognise you and want to say, how are you going? Or, or they want to say, well done, or congratulations, or whatever. Those types of little things make, um, make the celebrity status a lot of fun and something that um, is worth striving for. I first started playing basketball when I was about five years old for the Melbourne Tigers. I remember I was only five and very, very young and I was playing in the under 12 C grade competition. And for the first four years, I don't, cannot remember ever winning a game. 
there was myself and uh, a couple of other really younger guys in the team that were, were just sort of getting used to playing basketball and a lot of the time we're playing against kids that are 10 and 11 years old. Um, but I remember when we turned about 10 and we, we moved up to the A grade competition, we started to win some games and um, you know from then on I can't really remember losing too many games throughout our junior careers. We had a very strong um, junior team with guys like myself, Nigel Purchase, Ray Gordon. We all come up through the junior system together and all of us went on to make it into the NBL competition. So you can, t you can see that we had a, a really strong team but um, you know, I still have fond memories of those days when we were running around as little tackers um, trying to shoot it and, and the thrill you got from scoring points when you, when you were so young. So a lot of fond memories there but um, it definitely was a long time ago. I think that it's important at a very young age to be try and be taught the correct technique and the correct fundamentals because as you grow on, things will become a lot easier because you are doing things the right way. Also, off the court, there's a lot of things that you have to consider as well. I think that you really have to be conscious of your diet and keeping in shape and looking after yourself physically. Basketball is a very physically demanding game and if you think you can smoke and drink and and eat the wrong foods and all those types of things and become a good basketballer then you're thinking the wrong things because it, it's impossible and it, it is very very stupid to be doing those things and, and damaging your body like that so I think that you really in general you really have to take care of your body and also try and practice as much as you can but perhaps the most important thing of them all is that you have to have fun if you're not having fun playing basketball then you're not going to be able to achieve any success all the players in the NBL and who have reached this level have got here because they love the sport and have fun playing it. So I think in, in general, try and take care of yourself, practice hard and have a lot of fun. During the season, you're pretty much involved in basketball practically every day. The only day that you don't um, practice basketball is the day after a game. Generally after a game is a rest day. So that's the, day, the only day you'll have totally away from the sport. What generally happens is that um, you, every day we'll have team practice. Team practice will, will last for about two to two and a half hours and consists of a variety of different drills and working out different team defensive tactics and offensive tactics. And also a little bit of our individual skills, be it shooting and passing and dribbling. Those types of things take up a little part of our practice sessions as well. Every other day, every second day, we'll have individual practices. That is, we come down here with our assistant coach or the head coach and work with him on an individual basis on our shooting or on, on specific skill areas and that will generally last for about an hour, an hour and a half. So as you can see, it, it is a, a lot of the day is taking up playing basketball, um, but you know, it's what you have to do these days to be able to compete at this level. We're up to this section here and um, I've got it and I've, I've glued it up and I've put the glue gun down. I've gone outside to get the pegboard, and I'm carrying it. As you can see, it's a pretty large piece, so I'm carrying it steadily, easing it up. I finally get it there, I put it down, and I'm hammering it in. And I thought, like, yeah, it's good. And I'm like, geez, where's that glue gun gone? The closing games of the 1993 NBL season certainly generated a lot of excitement, particularly because the Melbourne Tigers made that great run towards the playoffs. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of the three games in the grand final series. After seven months of basketball, the 1993 NBL grand final is upon us and what a classical showdown it promises to be. Everything seems like it's falling into place for us, and uh, you know, we're very, very confident that we can take it out, but, but we do have the utmost respect for Perth. They, they led the league all year, so it's gonna be a difficult challenge, but, but like you said, I think that this is uh, one of our best opportunities. I think as it's shown throughout the series, uh, home court is, and home court in the first match is a very important game. Uh, the Giants, we saw, took the home game and, and came pretty close in the second game in Perth and the same with Brisbane uh, having a chance to win in Perth and I think 
if we're going to have a chance to win it all, we have to win it home. And we're away in game one of the 1993 Grand Final Series. Stephen, Eddie Crouch refereeing in his 14th consecutive series. That's got to be something of a record. Yeah, fantastic effort. Fisher, first shot of the match. Rebound, Dragke. Quickly to Gaze. Tigers going to the right of the screen. Gaze for three. Yes, sir. Well, that's the sort of start that the Tigers wanted. Now Grace, oh, weaves his way through. Magical two points for Ricky Grace. Simmons the screen. Gay shoots for three. Excellent start. Gay's back to Bradkey to Copeland for three. Oh, big rebound from Bradkey. Back outside to Gay's a mile out for three. And he drops another one. He's up to nine. Now Vlahov to Grace. Oh, Ricky Grace. Simmons for two. Now a chance for the Wildcats again. Grace. Oh, and he's doing some damage now as Ricky Grace. Watterson also one for the Wildcats. Crawford. Oh, great move by Grace. And a foul on yeah. Copeland. There's Whitehead. Oh, he's looking dangerous. Yeah, he's saved his best for the playoffs in the grand final. We Ten seconds left on the shot clock for the Tigers. I think Whitehead has it in his hand, and I doubt whether he'll give it up unless it's a shot. Whitehead shoots. Good defensive work from the Wildcats, but Tigers win it back. Gaze! Does it count? Yes, the Tigers have got the two. The Copeland, you, you sense that Grace has done a lot more than Copeland, but they're now matched on points at nine apiece, so he's really fought back. Well, alley -oop! Gaze to Copeland! So often we've seen that play ignite crowds here at the tennis centre. Their strength has been going inside all year. They've got to stay with it. Well, there's a marvellous display of skills as Andrew Gaze appeals to these 15,000 spectators to, to start to get behind his team. Now he dishes again and it's Simmons! It's a patented play, Steve. Sibley! Very critical time of the game for the Wildcats. They want to get back in and even up the scores. And the Tigers need to consolidate and build on that half-time lead. Grace for three. Good start for the Wildcats. Simmons has got to be so careful. Sibley, clever work to Tava to Copeland. Pass to Gaze. Gaze lob to Copeland! Well, Sensational play! High contact started when Copeland got the ball low on the baseline and Gaze was out in the front of the transition. Gordon snapping at the heels of Grace. Pressure's on. Double team Grace gets the pass away cleverly. Catalini's got the fumbles. Now to Fisher. That's In a drops. Good work, Fisher. Well, that's a courageous move by Simmons. There's a return favour from Carroll. So I guess it's one all as far as endeavour and maybe a little lack of concentration from both clubs. Sibley. He's got five fouls. Gordon for three, you don't see that often, well, but they'll take him. Whitehead a mile out for a bomb. Yeah, that was a prayer, and look at the other end, Blahoff on the break, and he'll jam it. Did his best to break the glass. <laughs> <Yeah>, just while <laughs> well, they snap down rings, that's a four point lead with the Tigers now. So he wants it spread out, and that's exactly what happens when they do just that. Grace gets a great drive for the basket. Yeah, the second half of this game protecting that one foul cushion. Crawford. Misses. Vlahov. Oh, it's Bradkey. on Bradkey and he's out of the game. Bradkey. Well, by gee, after all the contact we've seen, Dean, you'd have to say that was the softest of any. Spot on comment, John. I was just thinking that myself. If anything, yeah, Bradkey was the innocent party in that one. Vlahov. Thought about the three. Now Grace with the bandage around the head. Defence screams the crowd. Vlahov. Carroll underneath, excellent pass from Vlahov. Two points the difference. Grace, under pressure, shoots, no, gives it to Crawford. Fisher, oh, misses a sitter. Grace stripped of the ball and Scott Fisher, that might cost the Wildcats dunk time, Copeland. There's a statement, 15,000 people agree with it. Sends them out to a handy little cushion out there. Vlahov, Crawford for two. In the drops. It's a good two, but it's an even more important two for the Tigers because they've got possession and the Wildcats are going to have to foul. And I reckon this last 40 seconds could take about <laughs> four minutes. Oh, Look at the fouls be. this quarter. Three to the Tigers and ten to Perth.
important point. 115 to 108, so it's seven the difference. Grace. Under pressure, double team by Copeland and Whitehead. Gets the pass to Vlahov, a big bomb, makes it! 27 seconds, 109, 10, sorry, 111, trailing 115. We've got a four point ball game, folks. Copeland gets past three Wildcats, Simmons. Yeah, they'll run the clock down here. Wildcats will have to foul, and they fouled the wrong man. So it's out to six points. Grace, Carroll for three. No, Vlahov for two. And that is the game. The Tigers have won game one of the grand final series. Final scores, 117 to 113. Oh yeah, it was an exhausting game. You know, they just kept coming at us and um, going down the in the fourth quarter, it was really coming down to the wire. But, you know, we got a couple of lucky plays and like we said right from the start, you know, it just can be a bit of luck as it, it turns the game and it definitely tonight that's what it was. If we got the bounce and uh, went our way. Very nervous at half time, you know, 13 point lead. But uh, with the way the situation was, um, with our guys in foul trouble, it wasn't really a, a legitimate 13 point lead. So we really had to try and nurse them along. We were tempted to go into the zone, but our zone defense is that bad, we, we didn't want to gamble with that. So, um, you know, we just fought it out, tried to play smart, and I think in the end it was the right policy. I thought that we were a bit unlucky throughout the course of the game and getting so many of our fellas in foul trouble. But that was the way the game went, and uh, it was always going to be a matter of timing to see how long we could last or how long we could keep the fellas out there. There were some tough decisions being made through the course of that game as our key players had, and fellas who influenced the game seriously got into trouble. But uh, somehow we managed to hang in there. And, uh, you know, the, the steal that Steve makes here, that uh, a really big play, of course, with Copes and Andrew coming down the stretch there, we got some big moves out of them and there was never, ever going to be anything but a tight game. Great beers don't just come out of the blue. It takes time. So what's so special about Foster's special? The Wildcats must win tonight to keep their championship hopes alive. Ricky Grace with the basketball. Wildcats going to the right of your screen. Blaho, Bradkey, the rebound. Good help by Sibley there. Bradkey with the unusual matchup as he did in game one on Blaho. Tentative start by the Wildcats captain. Gaze dishes it outside, Copeland for three. Great start, Tigers, just what they wanted. There's Vlahov, sets himself for three. So it's five to three, the Tigers lead by two. A lot of nerves early in the game. Clever pass from Simmons to Copeland, that was clever play. Mike Ellis. Adrian Hurley just told his players to relax. Just take your time, you're trying too hard. Great move by Vlahov, excellent little post up there. He wants them to uh, just take their time and relax. And the big thing is keep Bradkey off the offensive boards. Oh, Gay, sensational move. 2.40 left in the first quarter. Grace weaves his way through. Great assist to Crawford. Very important possession for both clubs here as Copeland drives to the lane. Crofts takes a shot, gets the points and the bonus. Catalini with the rebound. And of course, the line up there's almost Great steal, a steal. Copeland. Oh, great work, Copeland. Torrance. Wildcats desperately need some points. Torrance. Up goes the shot, and in it drops. And boy, they needed that one, the Wildcats. Well done, Trevor Torrance. Ricky Grace matching up on Copeland. Sibley with the right hand drive. Dishes off to Grace. Oh, sorry to Gaze. Gaze comes back and hands back to Sibley. And Sibley has done that so well throughout that series. Grace goes around Copeland. And there's a hand foul called on Copeland. He's amazed it's not going to help him at all. The points count, and he goes for the bonus. 56-64, it's the Wildcats out in front by eight. Long way to go in this game, Stephen. These are quality clubs out there. They've got to the final of the Mitsubishi Challenge. They're not going to give in easily to anybody. Simmons kicks his moment and eventually decides to drop in. He was waiting for the foul. He saw Vlahov coming towards him. Vlahov got the hand out but avoided the contact. And his anxiety to get the foul, Simmons almost missed the shot. Grace to Crawford. Shoots over the top of Sibley. And Crawford's up to 20 points, game high. 
68-58. Wildcats by 10. Remember, they trailed by 10 at quarter time. Gaze. Copeland screaming for the three. Gives it to Simmons, who wasn't expecting it. Now they get it to Copeland, but Grace gets there. Copeland shoots over the top, big three. Copeland coming around the pick at the top, and there's Bradke, plenty of space. 70-63, Perth by seven, Grace, very sweet. That is a sweet, sweet move, Dean Templin, put it out on the left hand and just dished it in. Simply with the basketball for the Tigers. Remembering if the Tigers win tonight, the championship is theirs for the first time in their 10-year history as Bradke Knocks down two and draws the foul. And he takes his three-point tally up. Screen set by Copeland. Uh, by Crawford on Copeland. Now Crawford's free. Back outside to Torrance for three. Good passage of play from Trevor Torrance. He's elated with that as well he should be. It's 11-point lead for the Wildcats. I think he heard you guys out there. <laughs> and there's a nice little reverse layup there, Michael, from Simmons as he went on the baseline. Lahoff isolating on Bradkey. Looks for the spin move down low. Dishes it out once more to Torrance. And that's another three from Trevor Torrance. He's up to 10 points and it's 80-68. It's the biggest lead in the game so far for Perth. Interesting change in defensive stance out there as well. Defense is the key now, Steve. And Watterson matching up on Copeland. By G, he does that spin move so well off the dribble. Bradkey to Sibley. Sibley drives. Misses. Oh. 84-74, just over four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Gays almost walks the ball up. Big dunk from Bradkey. Fisher had a chance there. He only has 14 points. He's averaged 24. I do believe he's going to have to step up in this last seven and a half minutes. Copeland back on for the Tigers. Simmons sitting down with five fouls next to his name. Gays with 20 points. He's only had two points in the second half. Yes, they've done an excellent job points. on him. He goes baseline on Torrance. Props. He looks for the give and go and comes up with a bucket. And it comes off the glass, he's on the floor. Well, now it's critical, three points of difference. Six and a half minutes remaining before this second game's wound down. Copeland. In it goes, one point the difference. Post 95, up. Tigers 94. Six and a half minutes remaining in game two. Vlahov, he's got five fouls next to his name. Fisher. That's 14 points. There's Torrance. Vlahov for the three. Sets himself. No. Fisher wins the ball back for Perth. Good effort. Good second effort. New shot clock. Need to be patient. Grace right. to Crawford. Oh, yes. Dear. That's some excellent defense there from Whitehead. Whitehead on the break. Vlahov's got five fouls, remember? Whitehead does what he has to do. Fisher. That's what he had to do. Now the Wildcats have got to remain positive out there. Good defense from Copeland. Fisher in the middle. Will they clear out and let Fisher operate? Whitehead. Good pass. Oh, for three. Makes it. Oh, the Wildcats. Crowds up by ten. Long way to go. Three minutes. Tigers need to get desperate. Remember, the Tigers have nothing to lose. They can afford to be desperate in this game. They can afford to gamble. They will live to fight another day, or they can close it out right here and now. Race, one-on-one -on -one with Copeland. Assist to Crawford. Oh, a big bucket, Crawford. Well, Ray Gordon couldn't get any closer to James Crawford. He was stuck to him like a bit of flypaper. Gordon makes it. Gordon. Copeland, look for Copeland to take the shots. Or Gordon. Oh, thank you very much. This is the two easy free throws <laughs> and then nails the three under pressure. Walter well to Gordon. He's got to take the shot. He does, another big three. Not this time. Rebound, Watterson. The Perth Wildcats have won game two of the grand final series. We'll have a third and deciding game. Wildcats winning game two by seven points. 112 to 105. The three final games against Perth were probably one of the most memorable games that I've ever played in. I remember in game one we got off to a great start and for me personally everything seemed to be dropping. The ring looked like a hula hoop. I had 41 points and um, everyone, all the other guys in the team were really looking for me and, and it was just a, a lot of fun. Lennard had a couple of slams, 
Simo had a couple of slams, everything went right for us, and of course we ended up winning the game. In game two, it was a totally different story. We're now in, in Perth on their turf, and they really took the game up to us. Um, we got off to a great start, and in actual fact, in the, the end of the first quarter, we were about 10 points up, and I really did start to think that the championship was ours. But it wasn't to be in that game, because Perth really did come back at us, and Ricky Grace just had one of those amazing games. He took control of the ball and, and really created a lot of opportunities for his teammates, and he probably was the difference in that game. In game three, well, that was probably one of the most memorable games that I've ever been involved in, obviously because we ended up winning. We got away to a nice handy lead at the end of the halftime break. We were, we we're about five or six points up, and then we pretty much were able to maintain that right throughout the third quarter. And at the start of the um, fourth quarter, we were about 10 points up. We got away and kicked away to a little bit more. And we, in actual fact, I think we got about 16 points up. And then the Perth made a charge that, that I'll never forget. Andrew Vlahoff was shooting threes from everywhere. So did Scott Fisher hit a couple. And with 15 seconds to go, we were three points up. And Andrew Vlahoff shot a three-pointer from miles out that the ball touched absolutely every single part of the ring. It did everything except go in. Fortunately, it popped out. I got the rebound, went down the other end for a one and one and, and hit one free throw and sealed the game for us. And of course, we ended up winning the championship. But um, definitely one of the most memorable series that I've ever played in and something, a moment that I'll treasure for the rest of my life. Third and deciding grand final game. As I said, the winner this afternoon wins the championship trophy for season 1993. Simmons has the basketball. There's Sidley. Gage, Torrance will have the job on him again this afternoon. Gaze to Sidley, thought about the shot, changed his mind. Ten on the shot clock. Sidley forces his way closer. First points, Tigers. Race. Look at Copeland. He's fired up. Wasn't he fired up in game two on Friday night? He's certainly fired up for this one, as you would expect. Good dish. Vlahov for three. Yes, sir. What a start for the Wildcats. Turnover. Copeland for a hoop. Big jam for Leonard Copeland. 18 to 11, Melbourne by seven. Whitehead, there's Gaze. Just cannot get away from Torrance. So much pressure on Andrew Gaze. Copeland, will he take on Grace? He does. Oh, Brackey, Brackey. Huge great rebound. offensive rebound from Mark Brackey. Another chance for Perth, they're down by five. Brackey, here comes a dunk from Copeland. What's this? Whoa! Leonard Copeland, Wildcats into attack. Almost a steal from Giddy. Grace, good work to win it back. Pass to Vlahov. Off the glass, Crawford tips it in. No, it wasn't. Won't drop, but it's still a first ball. Lucky break for the Wildcats. Carroll, back to Vlahov. And it'll be a foul on Simmons as well. And Vlahov is hurt. Yeah, there's contact, heavy contact as they've landed. I suspect it was after the initial contact. We'll try and pick it up for you, of course. But as Vlahov went down, I think he's just simply winded. It'll be interesting to see just what sort of pressure on the transition the Wildcats can exert. Radke's had to come in. He's the difference to their rebounding potency. Giddy. Spectacular move from Warwick Giddy. That is a bonus for the Tigers. Reverse layup. He hasn't scored in these playoff games against the Wildcats so far. Every point he gets is a bonus for the Tigers. Grace for another three. This is 14 points. Three from four at the three-point line. Copeland spectacular again. Again, the lack of uh, foul cushion from Grace. Copeland starting to work on him. Fisher for three. Crawford. Strong move. Put it off the glass. Two points the difference. Tigers lead by two. Gaze for three. Yep. All his range and the Tigers bench realise how important that is. It does the crowd back in Melbourne. But I don't think there's much longer to go before he starts to uh, pump down a few more points. Grace. Gordon's got the job on Grace. We saw an interesting clash between those two at half time in game two. Two more points for the Wildcats, 54 51. Gaze, or oh, two more, the Tigers. Bradkey keeps it in. Crawford. Watterson, the Hail Mary. And it wasn't that far away. 
So what a fantastic first half of basketball as Ricky Grace goes over and gives Billy Milton Paul Miller the working over about that last foul. That at half time, it's the Tigers leading the Wildcats by three points. It's 56 to 53. He's been getting the rebounds and intimidating. Offensively, he's been putting the shots back. Vlaho for three, and they're dropping for the Wildcats. Bradkey. Back to Simmons, Copeland for three. Yes, responds. Bradkey trying to create some space. Giddy, Copeland again for two. Shoots over Blaho, in it goes. The Wildcats have missed very easy shots. Copeland the, the steal. Grace the steal back. Brilliant, Ricky Grace. Tiger 73, Wildcats 68. Two minutes before three quarter time. Copeland. Shoots over Grace. Oh, this is unbelievable from Copeland. Blahov to Fisher. Misses. Bradkey another rebound. A critical stage here for the Wildcats. The question's been put to them. They're trailing by seven. Gaze. Back to Bradkey. I don't know how he did it. And he draws the foul. So Fisher. They really need a two-pointer or a three-pointer before the three-quarter time buzzer. Crawford for two. No. Torrance. Bradkey another rebound. That is so typical. Copeland will have to hurry a half-court Hail Mary. Oh, I'm surprised it didn't go in. Well, a couple of interesting stats in the second half of that third quarter. The Tigers, as Grace goes for three, makes it. 88 plays 75. Very comfortable cushion. Long way to go. This one drops, but it doesn't. Right. Vlahov another three. Oh, Andrew Vlahov. So close. Copeland for three, makes it. 15 points the margin. Less than five minutes in the game. Grace bullet like pass to Vlahov. Simmons. I'll go to Gaze or Copeland. The ball carriers will get the ball here. Shot clock down to seven, six, five, four. Bradkey shoots. What Off the glass. Hit. What a big bucket for Bradkey. Grace. Simmons on Grace. Grace. Fisher for three. He has to make it. Does. So a chance for Perth, they're only down by six. Less than 30 left in the game. Huge screen set by the Wildcats. Fisher makes the three. No panic from the Tigers bench. 21 seconds to see another foul. This time it's on Ricky Grace, that's his sixth. Now look at the crowd behind the foul line. There are thousands trying to put Copeland off. This is pressure. Misses it. A chance for Perth, they're three down. Can they tie it up and force it into overtime? Torrance. Foul. That's the fourth foul. They've taken about four seconds off the clock. That's the fifth for Simmons. That gives the Wildcats an out-of-bounds possession. Will they go early? And they've lost it. No, oh, Vlahov got it back. Vlahov. Will he be the man? He takes the free. No, in and out. I thought it was home. Goodness gracious me, folks. I thought it was home. It was did everything but go in the net. That was as close as you want to get. What oh. courage to take that jump shot. It, it did everything but fall. Don't touch a thing, yells out Gaze. Vlahov for two. Oh. And the Tigers, for the first time in history, have won the NBL title. Well, super effort for the Melbourne Tigers. Great scenes of jubilation. Great presence of mind from Vlahov last time when he got that ball, Stephen. Didn't take the three-pointer, knew three points weren't enough. He wanted the foul, and Bradke was smart enough to back off. The final score is Tigers 104, Wildcats 102. This year's NBL title was just probably one of the biggest thrills that I've had in my life. For me, I've grown up with the Melbourne Tigers since I was five years old and have been playing with them right throughout the juniors, but I've never had the opportunity to, to win the pinnacle of Australian sports. And clearly the NBL is the highest level of competition and it's been a goal of mine since I was a junior. So to finally get there and achieve that goal was, was a huge thrill and something, a moment that I will treasure for the rest of my life because it did mean so much. Particularly when I look back and, and, and look at the history of the Tigers, in our first four or five years of the NBL competition, we were only winning two or three games in the whole season. So to have to endure such difficult seasons and such hard times, to finally to get to see the other end of it and win the title was a big thrill and a huge moment for me and, and the Melbourne Tigers. Thanks for watching the 1993 Swish video. On behalf of all the NBL players, we really do thank you for all your support and thanks for coming out and watching us play. And don't forget, in 1994, the Tigers will be there again. There are 
all sorts of claims being made about light beers these days. So what's so special about Foster's special? <laughs>